Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hayley from So Hayley Jane, which is a sewing dressmaking subscription box company. Um, and I'm here today, I'm doing another chatty sewing video, which I'm really excited about. Uh, I apologise, my throat's a little bit <coughs> out of sorts at the moment. Got a bit of a cold, um, hopefully I can carry on chatting though. So. I've done a couple of chatty sewing videos recently in the last few months, which you guys have really enjoyed, which I am so thrilled about. So thank you so much for watching. Lots of people like to put it on whilst they're sewing along as well with something else. It's like a sort of social sewing get together in your own home, comfort of your own home. <laughs> so um, some people sent me some questions from the last video, which I've got written down, so I'll answer those. Uh, there's not too many to this time, so hopefully I'll get a bit more sewing done. I struggled to do the sewing and the um, talking at the same time last month, so <laughs> hopefully I'll do a bit better. Looking a little bit scruffy today. It is a cold, cold day. I got up this morning and it was like a freezing mist. It was such a weird weather. Um, so I'm wrapped up warm, I'm wearing my Tilly and the Buttons Nora top in my favourite, this is my, one of my favourite most worn tops, it's just a viscose jersey and it's so comfy and I've got a thermal on underneath as well because it's cold. Um, so I've just had some lunch and I've got a few hours now before I have to go and pick my daughter up from my mum's house, actually no my mum's bringing her back to me um, at about five so it's what time is it now about half past 12 i think so i doubt i'll get everything done today but i'll give it a good go so i am sewing the deer and doe myosotis dress it's the second one i've done if you've seen my previous video which um was like a makes video i show you my first myosotis dress in the black and flamingo print viscose uh, which I love, but I want something a bit more autumn, winter appropriate. So I am using this beautiful wine coloured double gauze with silver spots that I put into the November luxury boxes, which were titled Pajama Party. So I think making a dress out of this is going to be like wearing secret pajamas. Pajamas? That because it's got a little bit of sparkle as well you can even wear it to a party I think I think it would be party appropriate and comfortable too so that's what I am using um, <coughs> excuse me to tell you a little bit about alterations that I've made first so after making my I'm gonna go by the way for view B which is just the simple no ruffles I think uh, I prefer the idea of ruffles in the summer um, in the autumn and winter I'm going to want to layer up and I think ruffles will just be a little bit too much with layers as well especially if I want to put a cardigan over the top then the um, sleeve ruffles are just sort of get in the way so I'm going for the simple version I've cut a size 44 at the bust grading to a 46 at the waist not that it's um, super necessary to do so because it's very loose fitting um, but I did find, I did that last time and the bodice fit really beautifully. So I'm going to carry on with that. I've also cut some ties to add to the waist just to draw it in a little bit because it's a little bit too baggy. Because um, it's supposed to be a floaty outfit. Um, but I need a little bit more definition in the waist. Otherwise it just looks like a sack on me. The other things I have done is I have lengthened the bodice a little bit as well. And I've done a large bicep adjustment just to give it a little bit more room across the back. And then, so those were all alterations I did on my first one. But after that one, I've also reduced the shoulder seam here. Because, um, I mean, it sits pretty much like all the way down here on me. So I'm thinking it's supposed to be a little bit off the shoulder. And I measured where it's supposed to be and it was about five centimeters I think which just seemed a bit extreme so I've just done I've just shaved a little bit I've done a two centimeter adjustment there I think is what I've done um, just to bring it up a little bit so we'll see how that looks um, 
it's like I said, it's quite a loose fitting garment anyway, so it's not supposed to be super super fitted. Um, but those are the adjustments that I've done. I have just tackled re-threading the overlocker into a matching um, colour thread because on my first version, which is a black base cloth, I used my white overlocker thread because I didn't want to re-thread it and you can see it along the, the collar, uh, the neckline facing, it does peep out a little bit. So I didn't want that to happen with this one. So I went for it, it took a little bit of effort. I did the thing where you um, snip the thread and tie the new one on and then pull it through, which did work, but unfortunately, somehow, I'm not really sure how the bottom um, needles got unthreaded. So I had to try and find them and thread them back up again. And then there was like adjustments, attention adjustments and things needed doing. So hopefully it's good enough. Fingers crossed. Anyway, I have got my cup of tea. Right, it's been a little while since I actually cut this out, so I need to remind myself of where I even need to start. I've already um, done the interfacing pieces and things like that. So, where to start? I think it's probably with the darts. There are a lot, quite a few darts on this pattern. There's um, you've got the bust darts, then you've got waist to bust darts, and then you've got back waist darts as well. So those are the first things to do. And then attach, stitch the front and back bodice pieces together with the, sh at the shoulders and the side seams. Which is always really exciting when you get to that point already, and you've already got something that's starting to resemble a garment. So that's quite exciting. Okay, so start with the darts. I need to start by uh, putting some thread on here, actually. That would be a good idea. Oh. Okie dokie, that's the darts done and already my hair is getting frizzier and frizzier. It's going to get towards the end of this video. It's just going to be an absolute nightmare. <laughs> right then, on to the side seams and the shoulder seams. So I need to just make sure I've got the right pieces. I'm missing a piece. I'm just missing a bodice piece. So whilst I'm doing this then, let's start with some questions. So over on YouTube, on my last video, some people added some questions. Do I need to stay stitch this? Thought I might need to stick stitch. Anyway, right, questions, questions, questions. That is that side. So, Deborah, I've written it down and I can't read my own handwriting. Deborah asks, Have you ever made a handbag or a wallet? Uh, I have made, I wouldn't exactly call it a handbag. I've made when I was in school, I made a, I did textiles at GCSE and made like a shoulder bag. And I was really happy with it actually. It was mostly denim, I think, with purple silk. And I did a kind of denim and silk patchwork effect on the, um, the, the bit that flaps over. Um, I don't know what happened to that. I have a feeling I may have given it to somebody because I think our brief was to design it for someone with them in mind. And I designed it for a friend who was nuts about Star Trek. I'm not really sure what it had to do with Star Trek though. But there we go. Um, other than that, I've made made any other bags I think I've made I made a like a bento but I haven't done anything particularly crazy I've made a bento bag which I have a um, tutorial for on my blog actually using some back quarters and I think I've made a tote bag as well like a shopper and that's about it really um, but no no wallet or anything like that 
So protesting Maryland seamstress says how us how did I research how to source fabric because she would like to open her own store in her US neighborhood. I just googled and googled and googled and googled. I googled things like um, fabric wholesalers UK obviously you would do fabric wholesalers US fabric suppliers dressmaking fabric suppliers those kind of words agents as well fabric agents are a good one to to google um oh i feel shivery <laughs> feeling all cold all of a sudden um and yeah you just sort of start finding links and um suggestions for looking in other places as well so yeah that's how i started i just googled words like that words like fabric wholesalers fabric agents fabric suppliers dressmaking fabric suppliers because you get a lot of home furnishing suppliers um which obviously i didn't want um uh, so yeah a lot there's a lot more quilting suppliers i think um or at least when in the beginning i found a lot more quilting suppliers quilting fabric suppliers than dressmaking fabric suppliers um, but they are out there, obviously, can't give the game away, but just keep googling, trying new links, contacting, picking up the phone, which I hate picking up the phone with, oh, passion, I hate it so much, um, but that definitely helps, so yeah, good luck, wish you all the best. Okay, I have pinned my pieces together, so I'm going to stitch those now. <coughs> Time to actually start constructing. It's exciting when you get to this bit. Don't know if you can hear the hairdressers next door. All their chatting and everything. It was lovely to have them next door. And I'm going over there next Wednesday, a week today, to get my hair cut. I'm thinking of slightly different shade of blonde balayage um, and maybe going a bit shorter again as well I grow it long because I feel like I can't do anything with my hair short especially in the summer and I want to put it up but then the longer it gets the scruffier I feel so I might go short again Ta-da! We have a sort of bodice waistcoat situation going on. So next, da 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 da, time for the overlock up. I'm really shivery. I've got the heater on right here. Is it on? Oh, it's on. Whoa. The cold is just getting into me today. Oh, right, whilst I'm setting this up then, Another question, ah, Ms. Ms. Hip Monkey asks how me is doing. That's so sweet of you. Thank you for asking that. So she's doing really, really well. She's talking. She's talking so much. Oh my goodness. The amount of words that she's coming out with now is just insane. She'll be two in February, the beginning of February. And yeah, she's... She's got some crazy speech going on. Um, current obsessions are Paddington and Winnie the Pooh. Um, she, she's got a Paddington book. And we tried watching the Paddington movie with her yesterday. <laughs> and I'd forgotten about the scene where Paddington gets his head stuck in the toilet and pulls the chain and floods the bathroom. <laughs> we, we've been slightly attempting to introduce the idea of potty training to her and she watched that and totally freaked out she did not like it at all she cried she ran off into the kitchen she wouldn't come back until i said we'd put winnie the pooh on so i felt horrendously guilty about that um but she seems fine she still wants to read the paddington book so that's good but yeah she's really really good thank you <laughs> right let's get these bits overlocked 
hope that the me re-threading the overlocker hasn't finished it off completely. Next step is to attach the facings to the front edges. Uh, so just need to pin those in place. And next question comes from Noelia who asks, are there any sewing channels you'd recommend and what's my husband's business? So sewing channels that I recommend, which, you know, I don't get a whole lot of time to watch sewing videos, uh, YouTube videos, but I do love the fold line, um, I often, I usually catch up with those, I really love Pattern Pals as well, um, I just, I like the sort of the chatty nature of the Pattern Pals videos, they're really nice, um, and Stitch Sisters as well, really enjoy Stitch Sisters, uh, who else do I watch, well yeah, I'll, what I'll do, because I can't, my mind's gone blank with those, so I'll put some links below to some of the sewing channels that I enjoy watching. Um, and so you can see there. And my husband's business, so Andy is a, um, a web and sort of software developer. So um, he started off just sort of developing websites, but now he works with some big clients sort of... Um, building, I don't really know how to describe it to be honest, but like systems for their businesses, like web systems as it were. Um, so yeah, that's what he does. He's great to have around for tech support um, and he very, very sweetly built my website for me. <laughs> Um, he didn't, he's not a designer, he's not a web designer. Um, we got somebody else to help out with that bit. Um, but yeah, so that's what he does. That's his business and he is upstairs, literally sitting above me right now. Um, and then there was just one more question from Hayley. Do, do you want any more kids? And also how many boxes do you send every month? So. Interestingly, those questions kind of go hand in hand. Uh, yes, I would like another kid, another baby. Just one more would be really nice. Um, but at the moment, it's a bit of a tricky one to try and achieve <laughs> because I can't really take maternity leave. I carried on with So Haley Jane when Mia was little. Um, creating the boxes and trying to do as much social media. Obviously I didn't do as much social media stuff as before and I didn't really do any YouTube videos apart from the monthly unboxing. I just about managed to do that. Um, but I'm just not sure how I'm gonna manage that with a baby and a toddler as well. Mia's not in preschool. She has uh, one day a week with my mum, one day a week with Andy's mum and one day a childminder. Um, so yeah, but so currently in terms of how many boxes I send, currently I have just over 200 monthly subscribers um, and yeah, I just need to, to build that up a little bit so that I can actually afford for Andy to come and work for work with me a couple days a week um, and then he can take on more of the sort of admin -y side of things and you know, if I create the content, he can publish it, he'll answer emails and phone suppliers and do that kind of stuff, leaving me just with the, the creative side of things. Obviously, sewing will take a massive nosedive if that happens. Um, so, yeah, that's currently where, where we are at with babies and business. <laughs> it's not an easy 
easy one to try and navigate, that's for sure. No, I don't want the overlocker. <laughs> that could have been disastrous. Okie facings are attached so now I need to press the facings to the outside and then understitch the facings. I really hate understitching, I think understitching is probably one of my least favourite things to do, I don't know why, it just annoys me. <laughs> it's like a necessary. Right, I have put on my chunky knit cardigan. This I have had for years and it's tatty and really quite disgusting but I love it <laughs> it's so warm okay the facings are done and I am slightly concerned about this it's quite I think because it's a double gauze I didn't need to interface it and I feel like it's quite stiff and there's quite a lot of bulk in there um, so I'm worried that it's gonna look ridiculous when it's on Hopefully it will be okay. Mm. So if you have a double gauze, I think maybe don't interface it. <laughs> I think you don't need it. So those are done. I've now got coffee. I've switched over to coffee. Whoops. Um, I usually am more of a tea girl, but I also don't tend to drink caffeine in the afternoon and I don't have decaf tea here. I've only got decaf coffee. So go for a coffee. I was tempted by hot chocolate actually, but I've gone for coffee instead. Okay, oh, onto the collar now, the collar. Construction, so collar, where are you? There you are. Okie dokie. Collar is constructed. Next bit. This is the bit I always find um, the fiddliest is to attach this. And the other thing, last time I did it, I didn't quite catch the facing into the collar. So I need to make sure that I do that this time because I had to sort of do a couple of hand stitches. So I need to make sure that that gets caught in. I was awake for some strange reason at 4.30 this morning, absolutely no reason whatsoever, no one else was awake, no one was asleep, it was quiet, but I was awake at 4.30 and as soon as I woke up my brain kicked well and truly into gear. That's why I'm tired, I'd forgotten about that. I, yeah, I've been awake since 4.30. Crazy. Who does that? Who does that? Coffee. Should have gone for the regular calf. Hmm. Well, it seems to be matching up, so that's good news. Just a little bit of easing in the middle. Nothing too horrendous though. So far, so good. I'm glad I've gone for the simpler version and less ruffles because that means I've only got one thing that needs gathering. I seem to have done a lot with gathering lately. Um, so I've done two indigo dresses by Tilly and the Buttons. I did a Colette Zinnia skirt which is um, gathered into the waistband. This is my second myosotis. Yeah, I think after this, I don't think I have any plans for anything else with gathers. Because I think I might stay away from the gathers for a little while, a little bit. I think I've overdone the gathers. Right, let's stitch this on.
I have had this dress in my mind since I've made my first one, uh, which was back in the summer. So I'm excited to get this done. I'm going to go and notch and press this up and then turn down this bit and top stitch the collar in place and then the collar's done. And the rest is hopefully easy going. Okay, back in a minute. So if the um, camera angle keeps moving slightly, I'm using my phone to film today. So I keep having to pick it up to answer calls or to read messages or emails. So hopefully I've got you roughly in the same place. Um, so yeah, apologies about that. Right, the collar is stitched on. I just need to top stitch it down now. Okay, the collar is done and I am really quite thrilled at how that's turned out. And I managed to catch in the facings as well on both sides. So I am super, super happy with how that's looking, looking nice and tidy. So the next bit is the buttonholes. And I had completely forgotten about buttons. I haven't chosen buttons, so I'm gonna get my button tin and see if any buttons jump out at me. Love my little button tin. It says, don't worry Mr. Button, I will save you. <laughs> got some pretty random ones in here. These massive green ones I got from, wasn't it a vintage shop? It's like one of those, um, how would you describe it? Like a treasure trove, trove? Tro you know, one of those shops where there's like just random bits and pieces all over the place. What's in here? Is that, I feel like this might be Christmas. Those are Christmas buttons. Got my Wim Wham buttons, they won't work. These, again, I got from the same place as this, I think, and these little um, cameo buttons as well. These are little sort of silvery ones with Egyptian things on them. I think I want something pretty simple. I've also randomly got the uh, letters from my light box. I've got my Christmas Wim Wham buttons. Uh, an empty plastic bag. I've got black buttons. What size are they? These were from Minerva Crafts. Does it say what size? No, I'll have to measure them. So black buttons, maybe. Uh, what was that for? I don't know what that was for. And then inside, I've just got loads of lovely random buttons. These my mum picked up for me when she went to the Isle of Harris in Scotland and she went to Harris Tweed and I think, I don't know if she got these buttons from Harris Tweed, she did get me some tweed from Harris Tweed, but she got me these from here as well. Some jeans buttons. Got some red, no that's the wrong, wrong red, but there are red ones. More black ones. Hmm. Okay, these are six, six millimeter, one millimeter over half an inch. So I think I will use those to do my buttonholes and then I will find something that suits it a bit better at some point. 
something silver maybe. I don't think I want to try and match the red, but maybe I could find one in silver. But I really, I'm one of those weird people who actually enjoy doing buttonholes. Um, because of my one step buttonhole function on this machine. This machine, by the way, is a Janome CXL301 and I'm in love with it. I love it. Oh, I've lost my button. So having said that my button that I love doing buttonholes, I have messed it up twice. Um, and I've tried to do it on just a bit of um, quilting cotton. And even still, it still looks a bit meh. So I know that I can get this on over my head without um, needing to do the buttons and I don't want to do the buttonholes again and ruin the fabric any more than it already is because it's already pulled a little bit in the double gauze. I don't know if it's just that it's too thick with the double gauze, the facing and the interfacing and it's just not liking it. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't want to do it again, so I'm going to do some faux buttons and I will just um, sew the buttons straight through both layers um, as is, because I know I can get this on over my head because I don't undo the buttons on the other one. So, get rid of that buttonhole first. <laughs> Not sure why it's <coughs> going up, but never mind. In this instance, it's not the end of the world. Okay, that's done. So I'm definitely thinking this isn't going to get finished today because I've still got to do the skirt, the pockets, and the sleeves. If I had all the time in the world, it would be fine, but I do not. I have no idea how long this video is at this point. Uh, there'll be a lot of bits cut out, obviously. I haven't been recording the entire time because it's not all that interesting all the time. Kind of regretting not doing sort of a longer sleeve, a full length sleeve. Uh, Kate from the fold line, I saw her at the sew weekend and she did a My Sew Stress, but she hacked it to have a full sleeve and I thought that looked quite cool, uh, especially as it gets colder. So I think I'm starting to flag a bit. What is the time? It is half past three. I think I'm gonna try and get the sleeves done and then say that's it for today. After having woken up at 4.30, I am just starting to fall asleep a little bit. And we all know that being tired and sewing is not a good mix. So I am back in again tomorrow, so hopefully I can get that done tomorrow. I might just try and overlock the pocket edges and get that bit done. And then tomorrow hopefully it will just be a case of inserting the sleeves and stitching up the uh, skirt. I'm going to turn it off here and because you don't really need to watch me overlocking. Um, so I will be back tomorrow for part two. Um, fingers crossed it gets done tomorrow. Uh, maybe a couple of hours. <laughs> we shall see. See you tomorrow. I'm back. It is the next morning and I am ready and ready to go. Feeling much better today. I mm, did fall asleep on the sofa for probably a an hour and a half last night before actually going to bed. So frustrating when that happens. I was all like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go to bed about nine, have an early night, half 10, I think, maybe even later than that, I woke up um, and then had to go to bed. And I did wake up about quarter to five, but then I think I managed to get back to sleep till my alarm went off at six this morning. So I'm feeling better, still a bit sniffly but feeling better so that's good and ready to crack on so I did manage to get my sleeves attached yesterday so I'm just going to hem them um, I finished the seams with my overlocker as well and I also I've left them over there but I managed to also sew up 
um, the straps that I'm going to attach to the skirt. So yeah, hopefully today it's just a, a case of sewing the pockets to the skirt pieces, sewing the skirt together and getting the skirt attached to the bodice. Obviously that does mean gathering, good bit of gathering to, to do, so I will probably uh, switch you off when I'm doing the gathering and switch on something to listen to <laughs> or watch. Um, but yeah, it's coming together. Da, 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 da. Bodice is coming together nicely. I am still panicked that the collar is a bit stiff. Um, and oh, obviously I haven't done buttons. I will need to do buttons, add some buttons on, but might be my Christmas day dress, this one. So I'm just gonna hem the skirt, um, hem the sleeves, and then crack on with the skirt. I love that I can take this bit off of my machine so that I can wrap the, the sleeve around. It makes things so much easier. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing my latest indigo dress made from the double gauze that was in the classic boxes. So this was in the luxury boxes and then this lovely powdery blue colour one was in the classic and mini boxes. And I managed to get this sewn up and photographed for the magazine so I include in the boxes as well um, in time. So that was really, I'm always really happy when I managed to do that. <laughs> um, you can see it in more detail in my uh, I filmed it a couple days ago actually, but I obviously haven't put it up yet, so I don't know when it will be. It will be before this one. I have done a makes video, so if you have a look back, it's either the last one or the one just before. <laughs> place is getting messier and messier as the uh, project goes along. I'm not very good at mess. I don't like mess. <laughs> but sometimes you just got to let it go. Oh, talking of let it go, I heard Adina Menzel on Radio 2 Breakfast Show this morning promoting um, Frozen 2 is coming out next week or Sometime in November it's coming out, so that is very exciting. Uh, I am equal parts looking forward to and dreading introducing Mia when she's a little bit older to Frozen because obviously I love it and I love the songs and everything, but knowing how many times we've watched Winnie the Pooh and that, that one of the songs from Winnie the Pooh is in my head right now, um, the Frozen songs are going to be stuck in my head which is at the moment I'm thinking well that's fine because at least they're good songs and I can sing along and everything but I know that it will get annoying anyway I already overlocked the edges of my pockets and my skirt side seams yesterday I got that done um, so it's just a case of getting them all attached okie dokie pockets are attached and I have also attached the straps to the skirt. Previously I've attached the straps to the bodice but I forgot to do that <laughs> so I'm hoping it will be okay with the skirt. The um, My other myositis dress has a really nice sort of smooth line along the back of the bodice so I'm thinking by attaching it to the skirt hopefully it won't detract from that. I could be completely wrong but we shall see. That's the hope. Right, so next is to attach the skirt back to the skirt front. We're getting there guys, we're getting there. It's gonna start looking like a dress soon. I'm not sure if I'll get round to hemming it today because I've got lots that I need to get on with. Um, however, I know that if I don't hem it straight away it's probably gonna sit for a good few days before it gets hemmed, as they always do. I 
got a skirt that I finished recently. I put that in my um, makes video as well, my Colette Zinnia skirt. That still needs hemming. I also made, I made um, the named patterns Rita shirt dress back at the beginning of the summer and I just didn't like it on me. So I have cut the um, the skirt off and I've been meaning to turn it into a shirt but I just have not got around to it yet. It's a very lightweight um, viscose so I will probably get around to that when we get around to the spring and the weather starts warming up again and I want more lightweight tops. I'm hoping it works better. I'm worried maybe it's the the style of the top that I didn't like. I don't know. But we shall see. It might work in a tucked into a skirt kind of a way. Does anybody else have a Christmas Day outfit planned or are you a pyjama on Christmas Day family? I am very much a Christmas Day outfit. Not necessarily new, but something a bit nice, something a bit a little bit dressy, obviously comfortable for a roast dinner and an extra roast potato, Christmas pudding, all the chocolate. Okay, so the skirt side seams and pockets are all done now, so I'm going to go press the seams open and then I'm going to gather all of this, all of this. <laughs> into the bodice. That is a lot of skirt to gather into the bodice, but hopefully it works out. So I am not going to film this bit because it's going to take ages and concentration. So I'm going to watch, put something on YouTube perhaps. Um, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, all done. The only thing I just um, hand tacked this bit down um, and I quite actually like the look of it without any buttons. Obviously it's a bit gapy, so I might just um, do some invisible hand stitches to um, stitch that bit down. But I quite like the look of it without the buttons, actually. Um, what do you think? So I shall stand back. I have even hemmed it. Um, I'll move the camera back a little bit. Here we go, all done. And I'm really happy with it. I um, have ironed, pressed the skirt upwards and top stitched it down as per the instructions, which I'm glad I did because when I tried it on first I had a bit of a bustle look going on here, um, but I think that's okay. It's, or oh, it's just, just on the right sort of length for me, any shorter. I only, um, I overlocked the hem and then turned it up once rather than twice, otherwise I think it would have been just a tad too short for me. All oh, my bits have come undone. Pockets are in. Uh, and I, like I said, I did add the tie waist, the ties. I'm not entirely certain. It does need it. It does draw it in just a little bit here. As I said before, I really like the shape here at the back. Um, yeah. Super, super happy with it. All done. I've even, like I said, I've even hemmed it. I wasn't going to, but I have done that so. Yeah, just need to finish off this bit. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope it was interesting. So I'm planning to do another chatty sew along video in December um, as part of a, um, a vlogmas, a sewing vlogmas tour that's going to be going on. Um, so I won't say any more. I'll let the person who's organising that tell you more about that. Um, so I'm planning to do a festive sewing video in December. So if you have any questions at all, you can ask them below um, and hopefully I will get them answered. But yeah, I hope you like it. I really love this colour. It's gorgeous and I love the added sparkle. I think this is definitely going to be my Christmas Day outfit for sure. A little bit of give there for comfort. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you so much everyone again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all really soon. Bye.